Hey everybody, it's a nice July day here in Wisconsin, so that's good. Um, hot, but not as hot as it is in other places, that's for sure. All those 100 degree, um, but I guess it's going to be real hot and humid this weekend. We have an outdoor mass scheduled for, so it might be hotter outside than inside because our AC has been working pretty well this year. Um, it's not instead of the 430 mass, it's an extra mass and uh, so this this uh, Saturday, what is, will it be? July 13th, we'll have uh, 4.30 mass per usual. I'm not sure which one's streaming. Uh, if it's Landon or Steve, it's usually the Saturday. If it's uh, Don, it's the Sunday morning. So I'm not sure. But um, anyway, that's regular mass. And then um, Saturday at six o'clock, there'll be we'll have mass outdoor, and behind the rectory in that beautiful yard with the shaded trees, and not supposed to rain, but it's supposed to be hot and humid. Man, here's uh, here's fun. This is just like old time wholesome, good times. Uh, after mass, we're gonna play softball, right? So hopefully the family softball crew will come, and maybe a few extras who might come for mass. So I might even try to bat and run. I've been steady pitcher the last couple times we've done this, which I actually prefer, but. I suppose I should take a few swings at the ball too. So, um, okay. So that's the big weekly news. Outdoor mass this weekend. I think got some other Paris news. I got a few things. You got our book club book here. It's not till August 28th. So we gave, I gave everybody the whole summer to try to read this book. It's about that thick. We'll talk about it a little later. Um, but I was trying to find it in my calendar when we met for book club and I couldn't find it. I couldn't find it. Then I turned one more page. Wow, not till August 28th. Okay. Uh, so this Sunday after the 10 o'clock mass uh, will be the sort of the beginning because it's set up time for our vacation Bible school, which we've called for years Sunshine Days, S-O-N, Sun, uh, Shine Days. Uh, so that'll be good. I think we have a good group of volunteers, good group of uh, youngsters to... Uh, um, participate and enjoy their time. So that'd be good. But uh, it takes a lot of setup. There's a lot of posters to hang and, you know, I don't, there's a lot of setup. So after 10 o'clock, if you could lend a hand, that'd be great. After the 10 o'clock mass, so like at 11, you know, I was going to say at at, at uh, 1045, but that's when, that's when Father Chefs was, was filling in. Um, which was great. He's very well remembered. I, I should. I'm gonna. I don't know if we'll be able to pull off a pilgrimage or not, but I'm. I'm. Uh, I'm planning on June 25. So I maybe I should call George and see if he's able to sub next June as well as as well as he was this June. Um, so we have uh, the stuff uh, from the old uh, Rourke Hall kitchen um, available. I. It's just a lot of people have taken a lot of it. So. We thought we might have to get a metal recycling trailer like we do twice a year. Um, but I think uh, we'll be able to just pull it away to the recyclers, whatever's left with the, with the trailer, because a lot of stuff has been taken. So it's one more uh, weekend. You can go, go down to Rock Roar Call and see if there's anything you'd like. Uh, if you put hold on anything, like the, some people didn't take it, but they want it, and they put a note that said hold on it, it'd be great if you could get that as soon as you can so it doesn't just linger on. And then uh, we're going to try to get that stuff to the recycling that's not claimed. Okay, uh, PCCW has been working good with the meals. We had another funeral uh, this week for Dan, Dan Messing. Good farmer. Speaking of farmers, can you tell where I am? It's pretty nice. It's a really nice spot, isn't it? Get out of the way. I was going to point it a little more this way, but that way, but... Uh, uh, the sun is there right now. It's obscured by a cloud. So this is probably the best vision we'll have before the sun sort of bleaches the scene out. But this is, uh, I think I'm still on County B, um, getting toward Mondovi, but not that close. I'm south of Double H though. So I'm quite a ways. I'm probably, hmm, I'm probably like 15 miles into a 32, 33 mile ride. So it's good. We have some parishioners that do these 80 mile rides. I called one, I called uh, David to see if he'd be up for going with me. And 
if he ever needs just a cool down ride. And uh, he must be on vacation because he didn't get back to me. And then we have Kevin on our, uh, he does the same. He's on our pastoral council. I should give him a buzz. Uh, but these are, these are been great nights for bike rides. It's been warm, but you create your own air conditioning when you're riding a bike, you know, the wind. And, um, and there's not the wind that you create, but it's not been very windy, which is always tough when it's windy to ride a bike. Um, but we had Dan Messing's funeral. He was a great uh, farmer, and he and he had four children, and, and he had five. One died when she was two, and that was uh, his ma. Uh, his wife said that um, he had commented that when he dies, he hopes that he can go home and to heaven, and that uh, Lisa, their daughter who died, will be able to hold him in her arms, just as he held her in his arms in her short life. It's a beautiful sentiment and beautiful vision of faith. Uh, Oh, someone's just pulling in to the property. I hope they don't um, yell at me for trespassing. We'll see. That'll be interesting for the chat if I do, right? Let's see how I can handle conflict. Um, might have to shut it down. We'll see. I should say everything important first. Um, speaking of uh, uh, life and death, we uh, Tommy and Caitlin are in the hospital waiting to give birth, so that's exciting. Um, there's a new baby, Rosalind. Lane came to us. Uh, Patrice or Nick got a note from Tyler and Laura that they gave birth to their beautiful new daughter. So congratulations to them. Uh, yeah. Um, but I brought it up because the funeral though, because PCCW they've been doing a nice, really nice job serving the meals uh, in the gathering space because the work hall kitchen is under construction, right? Um, congratulations to all of our graduates. I see Acacia. Fisher that's having her party on Sunday, so that's good. I forget where she's going. Something impressive. Something impressive. She came to her, I think, to our baccalaureate mass. Um, olive oil. So uh, as soon as I hear from St. Anne's, we're going to order olive oil. Hopefully get it in time for the bruschetta season. So uh, my favorite thing, what I plant in my garden, is uh, tomatoes and basil and garlic. And those things get uh, chopped and put in a bowl with some olive oil from Bethlehem, best olive oil in the world, and some salt and some balsamic vinegar and some Parmesan cheese and uh, put that all over toast. And it is delicious. I can't wait. The tomatoes are starting to form on my plants. Um, they don't, you know, I don't know. I think a lot, a lot of the branches are yellow. I think I've heard that that's um, happening. I don't know if that's called a blight, but it seems like they're still forming some some uh, tomatoes. Though little by little, I don't know if it'll be as bountiful a harvest as I've had recently. So anyway, tomato season's coming. We'll have that olive oil for sale. I'm gonna get mostly the big bottles, $40 for a liter. It's, uh, it's not really not that much more expensive than uh, $40 of that quality olive oil through the internet or through a store. And uh, this will go to help the Larsh community in Bethlehem. And everybody over there uh, is uh, suffering, <laughs> you know. I did, I did, you know, Rania, my friend over there that is our contact said, no, we're, we're okay, you know, but it's, I just know from my other friends there, it's, they're economically getting really choked if you live in the occupied territories there, West Bank. Um, pray for uh, peace. I, I did a little uh, Googling. I haven't heard much about Holy Family Parish in Gaza, speaking of that part of the country. Um, I also ordered some medium bottles of olive oil for $30. So half liter, 30, whole liter, 40. Um, but in, uh, there's the Holy Family Parish. And really tragically, I just Googled it three days ago on, on uh, July 7th. Uh, the Israeli Defense Forces raided uh, two classrooms of the uh, Holy Family Parish School. And uh, I guess they thought there was enemies. I think they did find a Hamas member or something, but they killed 16 people. And, um, uh, you know, the usual women, children. And so I wasn't, you know, it's hard to read that. And because uh, that's in Gaza City and fighting his return there. Um, read something about um, 
this was a couple months ago, but I bet you it still stands. I, I posted some pictures from Holy Family Parish, their mass, their daily mass that they had today. A lot of people there, some missionaries of charity, such a beautiful witness of Christian charity and love uh, with their white and blue trim um, habits. And uh, there were three priests at the altar, so their pastor hadn't been able to go. He was absent because he was in Rome or Jerusalem when the war broke out and he wasn't able to get back until May 21st. And now he's there to stay, he's happy to be back. He had an opportunity when the uh, Latin Patriarch of the Archbishop of Jerusalem went and had an event there he could go in. But, um, but what he said was there is a, there's a certain calm, not, not safety, but like a spiritual calm among, among his people. So I think our prayers work, and maybe we need their prayers as well, that we might have as much spiritual maturity as they do in the midst of war and destruction and death and sickness affecting not just those around them, but members of their community and, and themselves. They, uh, by all reports, uh, have a very lively faith and it brings a level of calm to their souls in the midst of all the horrible violence. Um, so that's inspiring to read. It, it's not reason to, <laughs> you know, not worry about them and, and not pray for peace, but uh, it does show you the good that faith, that faith can do, right? Um, See if there's anything else. There was a Holy Land Council for Peace and Justice. They're always, they always, you know, when there was a war, people that are waging the war want to say, well, it's a just war because, and, uh, you know, um, and there's, in the Catholic tradition, there's this just war theory, and they try to, anyway, Israel has said, you know, it's a just war because, you know, we were attacked, we need to defend ourselves against these attacks, and Anyway, the Catholic Church over there has a commission that speaks for the church leaders, and um, they didn't, you know, they, all they see is death and, well, it's not all they see, but they see a lot of death and destruction of their neighbors and friends and family. And then to hear the opposition say it's a just war, this is, this is, their, this is their response. They say, we are outraged that political actors in Israel and abroad are mobilizing the theory of just war in order to perpetuate the ongoing war in Gaza. This theory is being used in a way in which it was never intended to justify the death of tens of thousands, our friends and our neighbors. It's just, no, just part of the statement, so. Yeah, it started with horrible, awful violence, 1,200 killed in that attack that Hamas did. And uh, I think the count right now is 38,000 dead in Gaza. Um, so we pray for peace, for sure, and I don't know, support policies that we think lead to peace. Um, yeah, they're taking that. This the settler movement's taking so much of the Palestinian land right now too. It's just, it's not good for long-term peace. It's got a lot of a lot of making up to do. Um, hey, on a lighter note, we have minimally 15 seats left, maximally 20 seats left for the Express game on July 28th, um, Sunday, July 28th. It, uh, that's the semi-pro team in, in uh, Eau Claire. Um, there's a parish bike ride that day too, so we'll cut a little short so people that are going to the game can get over there by two o'clock. Um, 20 bucks cost 25 but you can get it for 20 because the parish is helping pay for it and um and just told me here's the bulletin there's people that bought three tickets they can't go and rather than say give me my money back which would have been fair that'd be okay um they said yeah maybe there's three people out there that would like to go but just can't you know fork over 60 bucks for it so not in their budget for the month they're trying to be more responsible with their money or they need to, you know, whatever the reason is, sometimes it's tight, right? So uh, get a hold of me if you're comfortable. It would be very discreet. It's not like um, you'd have a different color tickets that are, you know, free. Everybody would know you got freebies. Um, you could call if you're comfortable, call call Ann. She, they may have called around today and maybe they're maybe they've been taken, but hey, why don't you, if you're interested, give me a buzz or send me an email and I'll, uh, I'll uh, save them for you if they're still around. Um, uh, raffle, Summerfest. Summerfest is coming up. Second weekend in August. Uh, raffle tickets you might have seen. Chris, 
Chris and others, but I usually, when I look, it's usually uh, Chris uh, who is selling the raffle tickets. Thanks for doing that. Um, it's the, the bigger, limited number of raffle tickets. The $100 tickets they have better odds. Is there $100? Yeah, $100 tickets, I think. And then you can also get the ones for, you know, $5. Or is it 25 for tickets for 20 bucks or I don't know something that's more in that range and those are both available so there'll be two kinds of raffles going on um uh, and you know car show all that stuff it'll start cranking up pretty soon our summer fest um bishop I make sure I didn't lose anything I'll just mention this maybe see how we doing on 15 minutes also, how to not be afraid. It's not, I just started reading it. I like it. It's not exactly what I thought it would be like, <laughs> but I, I look forward to discussing it with the group on August 28th. I thought it might include like how to not be afraid. I just went through the introduction and read kind of what it's going to be about. I thought it was going to be about, um, like a, among other things, like if you're afraid of public speaking, how to, how to overcome those fears. Okay. But it's, it's not. It's more about social fears and kind of the fear that gets in our bones. Um, let's see if I can see the table of contents. But he's from Northern Ireland. He said he grew up with this incredible fear all the time because there was all this. He grew up in Northern Ireland during the Troubles uh, when you, know, you took sides, Catholic versus Protestants and this and that. And uh, um, you just you didn't know if a bomb was going to go off in your neighborhood. And so, you know, things like that. Um, there go the people. So they didn't, I guess I didn't bother them. I thought they were gonna say, get off my land. So that's nice. Oh, on the way over here, uh, I was bicycling past Mayo Hospital and um, uh, I thought it was my friend Julia and on a bike, cause she rides bike. And so I kind of wave and I didn't, didn't get a response right away, but then I, I didn't wave that much. And then I said, is it Julia? And, and the woman said, no, but hi, just the same, <laughs> or hi anyway. I forget how she put it. It was kind of clever. And I thought, you know, what, what a nice response on her part, you know, because I feel kind of stupid for saying as a Julia what it's not. And then I think most people, I don't know, they'd smile, but I think they'd just say no and go on. Um, and then leaves me feeling kind of dumb. But the way she responded, it was like just friendly. It sort of built community a little bit. It made me feel good. It's like, well, oh, I was good. I, I'm glad I asked. I'm glad I went outside of myself to say as a Julia, because even though I was wrong, it seemed to bring a little smile to someone's face and certainly to mine. And anyway, the way little ways we can add not just civility, but charity and goodness to our days. We need we need that so bad, right? Uh, so this book about he said there's some fears that are pretty core. He names them as these, the fear of being alone, the fear of having done something that cannot be fixed, the fear of a meaningless life, the fear of not having enough, that's one of mine, the fear that you'll be broken forever, fear of the world, and fear of death. So those would be kind of the core fears, but I, but I, I like what he I like what he says in here. He talks about how um, if you just kind of a lot about social media and that's not news that it, it just sort of gins up fear in our world. Um, the way that uh, politicians gin up fear in the world. Um, and there's I wish I was a little clearer. Maybe as I read this, I can say it better. But there's different stories. You know, we all have these stories about how we interpret life. And. Uh, one of the stories that he says is dominant in our culture is that um, violence can end chaos and bring order and that um, our security can be achieved through violence and war and stuff like, like that. And, and he's trying to say, well, that's, that's not necessarily true. And there's, there's other, uh, other stories we can tell ourselves about the right way to live and that violence is going to be the solution to all our problems, you know. Um, I put in the bulletin this weekend a little bit what he said about the uh, the smartphones, which was really, I thought, really kind of clever. But I won't read that now because that's in the bulletin. Uh, 
He's like I said, he grew up in Northern Ireland. He said the experience of four decades of not dying insists that no matter how difficult circumstances may seem, today is not my forever. Isn't that, isn't that pretty clever in one sentence? All the you know, I live. He's probably in his forties. Goes the experience of being forty years and sometimes a very vulnerable neighborhoods. I've been alive this long and I haven't died. It kind of gives me some confidence that um, any problems today is not my forever. That's always good to know. Just that things pass, you know? I'm trying to, honestly, I'm trying to not eat so much because I, I guess my metabolism metabolism is slowing down and I feel it when I'm riding my bicycle up a hill. I feel like I got a lead, a lead uh, belt on or something. And uh, gosh, a lot of it is is just... Uh, you're not, not eating when you're hungry, but because you have a certain pattern of eating or it, it makes you feel something. And uh, we, we were trying to do our computers training today. Nick was helping us learn SharePoint. And uh, uh, Patrice made this beautiful tuna masala. And uh, anyway, Christine was joking sweet because it was getting a little tricky and stressful about how we organize files and find our files on the computer. And so when, when we went for the tuna dip she's like stress eating stress eating <clears throat> so but to be able to to just sit <laughs> and feel restless feel anxious and not you know reach for the tuna dip or the cheetos or whatever it might be it's a it's a skill but last night you know last night i i was pretty successful i just kind of had a salad in the evening and i thought well, i'm not going to eat again tonight because you know when i was in montana and they didn't have night food it's not like i could go to the cupboard and so and i was fine so i can do it it's all psychological but when i'm home it's like i you know eat at night because i got the refrigerator i got the cupboard and uh <laughs> so i'm not gonna do it and i didn't do it but i was just like really hungry at midnight and i still didn't do it but then i i woke up at four just hungry so i finally just i had some corn checks at four you know I was like, gosh we're such mysteries to ourselves um anyway just that idea would be very helpful for me you know that emotions pass that unpleasant things going through our mind and heart you know they pass just kind of notice it and let it let it pass don't let it determine your actions um he had a nice meditation in here about where it go that I, it wasn't maybe in the introduction. I was going to read a passage, but I don't think I will. Being read to isn't necessarily much fun, is it? As soon as I say that, I see something maybe. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Um, that's the part I wrote in the bulletin. He talks about the fear that is beneath the fear that matters more than what's on the surface sometimes, you know. And we might, we might fear, uh, I don't know, having, losing some money or something like that. And and that's that's not good. No one wants to lose money. I got quasi scammed again last week, but um, but maybe the deeper fear is that if I lose that money, I'm a failure, or I won't be able to buy something for someone I like and then I won't be liked, you know, you know, those deeper insecurities. But no kidding, just is just, I don't tell you this make you feel sorry for myself and it's, and it's kind of a small thing, but in, in April I got kind of big time scammed and it's all because, anyway, it's all we're Googling things and then what comes up on Google is false. And again, that happened. So I wanted to get tickets from Pablo and I went to the Pablo Center org address is where you should go to get tickets or the box office. And I just couldn't find it right away. So I Googled, Pablo Center tickets for the show I wanted. And, uh, well, then, it, you know, something came up. I clicked it, and there it was, you know, I, and, I, and I clicked it. And, I, and, I, and there are all these service charges and stuff. And I swear Pablo said, I'm, we're not going to do that to you anymore. So I was trying to, anyway, there are all these little points that seem funny. But I went through with it and PayPal and all that stuff. So, uh, and then I, you know, I just realized it wasn't, wasn't right. And in the end, I did get my tickets, but paid a lot more than I would have if I had not exuberantly more, but, but some more. Because instead of going to pablocenter.org, it took me to ticketsales.com. So beware. That's another thing. Beware. If you're getting tickets from a place, make sure it's the website of the place and not like this other place that 
upcharges you. And I guess there are many and it's totally legal and it's just sad. Uh, okay, this is called An Invitation to Breathe. Uh, I, won't, I won't read it, but it says, with your eyes open, call to mind something that sparks a smile or gratitude or love. It's just, it's with your eyes open, you just kind of think what, you know, what a person, an event, maybe a beautiful scene like this that brings a smile to your face and makes you feel gratitude or love. And it says, just kind of, just kind of hold that and remember that. And then, then it, gradually you, you breathe and you just keep that image before you. And then, uh, and there'll be distractions, but then just, you know, breathe and let the image come back and, and feel that smile, that gratitude, that love. And then it then says, close your mind and then send that image to every cell in your body. Send that image to every cell in your body. And do that for a little while with to your breath when you breathe out it's like sense. and then this time when we breathe out, i says send that image to people you know who might need it people you know who might need it so anyway i thought i, I tried it it was lovely you know it, these little little different ways to meditate or prayer can be helpful um so Anyway, I'm looking forward to reading this. Uh, that's a little bit what it's about. Maybe I gave you a sense. August 28th, we'll discuss it. If I come across any more pearls, of course, I'll share them in the chat. Um, the bishop. Oh, I probably should have started with him because it's going to be more interesting. Uh, <laughs> he gave a really good talk. In fact, these are the notes to the talk. I typed them up. One of my friends who's a priest didn't go to his talk. And so I said, I'm going to type these up and send it to him so he can check it out. Um, I shared a daily mass because it was appropriate for the first reading. Um, but when he talked to us, he talked probably for 25 minutes. And it was really a lovely, lovely talk. It was very Christ-centered. And uh, he said... You know, when there's a new bishop, you, know, you kind of want to make a good impression. You know, you want, you, it's not like you, you know, blatantly want to curry favor with someone. But, you know, he's a new bishop. He's, he's, your, he's your boss. He's your head shepherd. And, and he said, um, he said, I, as your new bishop, I hope, I hope that you do not seek my approval. I hope you seek Jesus' approval. And I, I said, and I'm not going to seek your approval. I'm going to seek Jesus' approval. <laughs> I just thought that was really a nice. Yes, he, didn't, he didn't actually lead with that, but it was kind of early in the talk. And he said, before that, he said, you know, bishops come and go. Priests come and go. Jesus is eternal. So don't seek my approval. Seek Jesus. And I'm not going to seek your approval. <laughs> I think he's going to be, I've heard a few decisions he's made already, and I think they were good ones. Eventually he'll make one for me that I might not like, or that something I might, you know. That's what he said the other day when we were with him. He was, I said, everybody seems to like it. He goes, well, that's because they haven't, I haven't made any decisions that you don't like yet. <laughs> um, but he also said this, he said, being Jesus' friend is the single greatest thing that can happen to any human being. I think that's a direct quote. Being Jesus' friend is the single greatest thing that can happen to any human being. And he talked about how Jesus aches for us, aches for us. He used that, that verb a lot to ache for someone. He aches for us and that we should learn to ache for him. And, and he said, can you trust me as your bishop? He said, you can if I trust Jesus. So anyway, that was just a couple of things that I that I that I heard from him that I thought were quite quite good. Um, and maybe that's maybe that's about it for today. All right, well, it's time's up anyway. So okay, uh, I hope it was somewhat interesting. Beautiful, beautiful scene. I'll let you leave you with here. You hear the birds? All good gifts around us are sent from heaven above. So thank the Lord 
Oh, thank the Lord for all his love. God bless you, everybody.